Chapter 21 The Chapters on Blood Money Chapter 1 The Severity of Killing a Muslim It was narrated from Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah said, The first matter concerning which judgment will be passed among the people on the day of resurrection will be bloodshed. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah said, No person is killed wrongfully, but a share of responsibility for his blood will be upon the first son of Adam, because he was the first one to kill. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah said, The first matter concerning which judgment will be passed among the people on the day of resurrection will be bloodshed. Great Sahih. <clears throat> it was narrated from Uqba bin Amir al-Juhani that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever meets Allah SVT, not associating anything in worship with him, and not having shed any blood unlawfully, will enter paradise. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Bara bin Asib that the Messenger of Allah said, If this world were to be destroyed, that would be less significant before Allah SVT, than the unlawful killing of a believer. Great Hassan. <clears throat> It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever helps to kill a believer, even with half a world, he will meet Allah SVT with the words written between his eyes. He has no hope of the mercy of Allah SVT. Great Daif. Chapter 2 Can the one who kills a believer repent? It was narrated. That Salim bin Abu Jad said, Ibn Abbas was asked about one who kills a believer deliberately, then repents, believes, does righteous deeds, and follows true guidance. He said, Woe to him, can there be any guidance for him? I heard your prophet say, The killer and his victim will be brought on the day of resurrection with slain holding onto the head of his killer saying oh lord ask this one why did he kill me by allah svt allah svt the mighty and sublime revealed it to your prophet then he did not abrogate it after he revealed it great sahih it was narrated that abu sayyid al Qudri said Shall I not tell you what I heard directly from the Messenger of Allah? I heard it and memorized it. A man killed 99 people. Then the idea of repentance occurred to him. He asked who was the most knowledgeable of people on earth. And he was told of a man. So he went to him and said, I have killed 99 people. Can I repent? He said, after 99 people, he said, so he drew his sword and killed him, thus completing 100. Then the idea of repentance occurred to him again, so he asked who was the most knowledgeable of people, and he was told of a man. So he went to him and said, I have killed, one, I have killed 100 people, can I repent? He said, woe to you. What is stopping you from repenting? Leave the evil town where you are living and go to a good town, such and such town, and worship your Lord there. So he went out, heading for the good town, but death came to him on the road. The angels of mercy and angels of punishment argued over him. Iblis, Satan, said, I have more right to him, for he never disobeyed me for a moment, but the angels were but the angels of mercy said he went out repenting. One of the narrators, Hamam, said, who made at Tavil narrated to me from Bakr bin Abdullah that Abu Rafi said. <clears throat> so Allah SVT sent an angel to whom they referred the case. He said, 
look and see which of the two towns was he closer and put him with it pe and put him with his people. One of the narrators, Katada, said, Hassan narrated to us. When death came to him, he strove and drew closer to the good town and farther away from the evil town, so they put him with the people of the good town. Great Sahih Chapter 3 If a person's relative is killed, he has the choice of three things. It was narrated from Abu Sharai al Kusai that the Messenger of Allah said, <clears throat> Whoever suffers from killing or wounding has the choice of three things, and if he wants the fourth, then restrain him. He may kill the killer, or forgive him, or take the blood money. Whoever accepts any of these options, then kills the killer, after that will have the fire of hell to abide therein forever. Great Daif. It was narrated from Abu Hureyra that the Messenger of Allah said, If a person's relative is killed, he has the choice of two things. He may either have the killer killed, or he may demand the blood money. Great Sahih. Chapter 4 One who is killed deliberately and his heirs accept the blood money. It was narrated that Siyad bin Saad bin Dumaira said, my father, and my, my father and my paternal uncle, who were present at Hunain with the Messenger of Allah, narrated to me. The Prophet prayed Sud. Then he sat beneath a tree. Akira bin Habis, who was the chief of Kindaf, came to him, arguing in defense of Muhalim bin Jatfama. Uyayna bin Hisn came to him demanding vengeance for Amir bin Adbat, who was from the tribe of Ashja. The Prophet said to them, will you, accept the blood, will you accept the blood money? But they refused. Then a man from Banu Lait, whose name was Mukaital, stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, SVT, this man who was killed in the early days of Islam is like sheep that come to drink, but stones are thrown at them, so the last of them runs away, yet the murderer should be killed. The Prophet said, you will have 50 camels while we are traveling and 50 camels when we return. So they accepted the blood money. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Ahmed bin Shuaib, from this father, from his grandfather, that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever kills deliberately, he will be handed over to the heirs of the victim. If they want, they may kill him, or if they want, they may accept the blood money, which is 30 Hika, 30 Jadha, and 40 Khalifa. This is the blood money for deliberate slaying. Whatever is settled by reconciliation belongs to them, and that is a binding covenant. Great Hassan. Chapter 5 The blood money for what appears to be intentional due to its harshness. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr that the Prophet said, Killing by mistake that resembles intentionally is killing with a whip or stick, for which the blood money is 100 camels, of which 40 should be pregnant she camels in middle of their pregnancies, with their young in their wombs. Another chain reports a similar hadith, Great Sahih. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah stood up on the day of the conquest of Mecca, on the steps of the Kaaba. He praised and glorified Allah, SVT. Then he said, Praise is to Allah, SVT, who has fulfilled his promise granted victory to his slave and defeated the confederates alone. The one who is killed by mistake is the one who is killed with a whip or a stick. For him the blood money is 100 camels, 
of which 40 should be pregnant she camels with their youngs in their wombs every custom of ignorance period and every blood claim is beneath these two feet of mine yeah is abolished except for the custodianship of the Kaaba and the provision of water for the pilgrims which I confirm still belong to the people to whom they belonged before great Daif chapter 6 the blood money for killing by mistake it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the messenger of Allah set the blood money at 12,000 dirham great Hassan It was narrated from Amr bin Shuaib, from his father, from his grandfather, that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever is killed by mistake, his blood money in camels is 30 bint Makhad, a one-year-old she-camel, 30 bint Labun, a two-year-old she-camel, 30 Hika, a three-year-old she-camel, and 10 Bani Labun, two-year-old male camel. The Messenger of Allah used to fix the value of the blood money for accidental killing among town dwellers at 400 dinar or the ex equivalent value in silver. When he calculated the price in terms of camels for Bedouins, it would vary from one time to another when prices rose. The value in dinar, dinars would rise and when prices fell the value in dinar would fall at the time of the messenger of Allah the value was between 400 and 800 dinar or the equivalent value in silver 8000 dirham and the messenger of Allah ruled that if a person's blood money was paid in cattle among those who kept cattle the amount was 200 cows and if person's blood money was paid in sheep, among those who kept sheep, the value was 2,000 sheep. Hassan. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Masud that the Messenger of Allah said, The blood money of one who killed by mistake is 20 Hika, 3-year-old she-camels, 20 Jadha, 4-year-old she-camels, 20 Bint Makad, one year old she camel, twenty bint Labun, two year old she camels, and twenty Bani Makad, one year old she camels. Great Daif. It was narrated from Ikrima from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet set the blood money at 12,000 dirham he said this is what Allah says and they could not find any cause to do so except that Allah and his messenger had enriched them of his bounty he said by their taking this by their taking the blood money great Hassan <laughs> chapter 7 the blood money must be paid by the Akila. If there is no Akila, then it must be paid from the treasury. It was narrated that Mughira bin Shuba said, The Messenger of Allah ruled that the blood money must be paid by the Akila. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Mikdam Ash Shami that the Messenger of Allah said, I am the heir of the one who has no heir and I will pay blood money on his behalf and inherit from him and the maternal uncle is the heir of the one who has no heir he pays the blood money on his behalf and inherits from him great Sahih chapter 8 one who prevents the next of the kin of the slain from, ex from exacting retaliation or taking the blood money it was narrated from Ibn Abbas who attributed it to the Prophet. Whoever kills out of folly or for tribal motives using a rock, a whip or a stick, he must pay the blood money for killing by mistake. Whoever kills deliberately, 
he is to be killed in retaliation. Whoever tries to prevent that, upon him is the curse of Allah, the angels and all the people, and no change nor equitable exchange will be accepted from him. Great Sahih Chapter 9 Actions for which there is no retaliation Nimran bin Jariya narrated from his father that A man struck another man on the wrist with his sword and, sev and severed it Not at the joint He appealed to the Prophet who ordered that the dia be paid The man said O Messenger of Allah, I want retaliation. He said, Take the compensation and may Allah bless you therein. And he did not rule that he be Allah allowed retaliation. Great Daif. It was narrated from Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib that the Messenger of Allah said, There is no retaliation for a head wound that does not reach the brain, a spear wound that does not penetrate deeply or a wound that dislocates a bone. Great Daif. Chapter 10 One who inflicts a wound may ransom himself by paying the compens compens compensatory money. It was narrated from Aisha that The Messenger of Allah sent Abu Jam bin Hudayfa to collect Sadaqah. A man disputed with him concerning his Sadaqah, and Abu Jam struck him and wounded his head. They came to the they came to Prophet and said, Compensen, compensen compensatory money. O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet said, you will have such and such, but they did not accept that. He said, you will have such and such, and they agreed. Then the Prophet said, I am going to address the people and tell them that you agreed. They said, yes. So the Prophet addressed the people and said, these people of Laif came to me seeking compensatory money, and I have offered them such and such. Do you agree? They said, No, the emigrants wanted to attack them, but the Prophet told them not to, so they refrained. Then he called them and offered them more and said, Do you agree? They said, Yes. He said, I am going to address the people and tell them that you agreed. They said, Yes. So the Prophet addressed the people, then said, Do you agree? They said, Yes. Great Daif. Chapter 11 The Blood Money for a Fetus It was narrated that Abu Huraira said The Messenger of Allah ruled concerning a fetus that the blood money was a slave, male and female. The one against whom this verdict was passed said Should we pay blood money for one who neither ate, drank, for one who neither ate, drunk, shouted nor cried at the moment of birth? One such as this should be overlooked. The Messenger of Allah said, This man speaks like a poet, but the blood money for a fetus is a slave, male or female. It was narrated that Miswar bin Makrama said, Umar bin Khattab consulted the people concerning a woman who had been caused to miscarry. Al-Mughira bin Shuba said, I saw the Messenger of Allah rule that a slave, male or female, be given as blood money for a fetus. Umar said, Bring me someone who will testify alongside you. So he brought Muhammad bin Maslama to testify along with him. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Umar bin Khattab that He asked the people about the ruling of the Prophet concerning that concerning a fetus. Hamal bin Malik bin 
Nabigha stood up and said, I was between my two wives and one of them struck the other with a tent pole, killing her and her a fetus. The messenger of Allah ruled that the blood money for the fetus was a slave and that she would be killed in retaliation. Great Sahih. Chapter 12 Inheritance from the Blood Money It was narrated from Sayyid bin Musayyab that Umar used to say, The blood money is for the near male relatives from the father's side, and the wife does not inherit anything from the blood money of her husband until Ad Dahak bin Sufyan wrote to him and told him that the Prophet ruled that the wife of Ashiam bin Dibabi should inherit from the blood money of her husband. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Ubada bin Samit that the Prophet ruled that Hamal bin Malik Hudhali al Liani should inherit from his wife, who was killed by his other wife. Great Daif. Chapter 13 The Blood Money of a Disbeliever. It was narrated from Ahmed bin Shuaib from his grandfather that the Messenger of Allah ruled that the blood money for the people of the book is half of that of the blood money for the Muslims, and they are the Jews and Christians. Great Hassan. Chapter 14 The Killer Does Not Inherit. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, The killer does not inherit. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Ahmed bin Shuaib that Abu Qatada, a man from Banu Mudlij, killed his son, and Umar took 100 camels from him, 30 Hikka, 30 Jadha, and 40 Khalifa. Then he said, where is the brother of slain? I heard the messenger of Allah say, The killer does not inherit. Great Hassan. Chapter 15 The blood money of a woman who kills someone is upon her male potential inheritors, and her inheritance is for her child. It was narrated from Ahmed bin Shuaib from his father that his grandfather said, the Messenger of Allah ruled that a woman's blood money, if she kills someone, should be paid by her male relatives on her father's side, whoever they are, and they should not inherit anything from her, except what is left over after her heirs have been taken their shares. If she is killed, then her blood money is to be shared among her heirs since they are the ones who may kill the one who killed her. Great Hassan. It was narrated that Jabi said, The Messenger of Allah ruled that the blood money should be paid by the near male relations from the father's side of the killer. And the such relatives of slain woman said, O Messenger of Allah, her legacy is for us, he said. No, her legacy is for her husband and children. Great Daif. Chapter 16 The Retaliation for a Tooth. It was narrated that Anas said, Rubai, the paternal aunt of Anas, broke the tooth of a girl, and they, her family, asked the girl's family to let her off, but they refused. They offered to pay compensation compensatory money but they refused so they came to the so they came to prophet who ordered retaliation Anas bin Nadir said O messenger of Allah will the tooth of Rubai be broken by the one who sent you with the truth it will not be broken the prophet said O Anas what Allah has decreed is retaliation so the people accepted that and forgave her the Messenger of Allah said, There are among the slaves of Allah those who, if they swear by Allah, Allah fulfills their oath. Great Sahih. 
Chapter 17 The Compensatory Money for Thief It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, Thief are all the same, the incisor and the molar are the same. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet ruled that the, comp the, compens the compensatory money for a tooth was five camels. Great Sahih. Chapter 18 The Compensatory Money for Fingers It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet said This and this are the same, meaning the pinky finger, ring finger and thumb. Great Sahih It was narrated from Amr bin Shuaib, from his father, from his grandfather, that the Messenger of Allah said The fingers are all same and the compensatory money for each of them is 10 camels. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abu Musa al-Ashari that the Messenger of Allah said, The fingers are the same. Great Sahih. Chapter 19 A wound that exposes the bone. It was narrated from Amr bin Shuaib, from his father, from his grandfather, that the Prophet of said, for a wound that exposes a bone is five, the compensation is five camels. Great Hassan. Chapter 20. If a person bites a man and he pulls away his hand and his tooth comes out. It was narrated from Yala and Salama, the sons of Umeya said. We went out, we went out with the messenger of Allah on the military expedition of Tabuk, and with us was a friend of ours. He fought with another man while we were on the road. The man bit the hand on his opponent, who pulled away his hand, and the man's tooth fell out. He came to the Messenger of Allah, the man in compensatory money for his tooth, and the Messenger of Allah said, Would any one of you go and bite his brother like a stallion? Then come the man in compensatory money. There is no compensatory for this. Hence, the Messenger of Allah invalidated it, yet compensatory in such case. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Imran bin Hussein that a man bit another man on his forearm. He pulled away his arm away and the man's tooth fell out. The matter was referred to Prophet, who invalidated it and said, would one of you bite another like a stallion? Great Sahih. Chapter 21 A Muslim should not kill for a disbeliever. It was narrated that Abu Juhayfa said, I said to Ali bin Abu Talib, Do you have any knowledge that the people do not have? He said, No, by Allah, you only know what the people know except that Allah may bless a man with understanding of Quran or what is in this sheet, in which are mentioned the rulings on blood money from the Messenger of Allah, and it says that a Muslim should not be killed in retaliation for the murder of disbeliever. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Amr bin Shuaib, from his father, from his grandfather, that the Messenger of Allah said, a Muslim should not be killed in retaliation for the murder of a disbeliever. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet said, A believer should not be killed in retaliation for the murder of a disbeliever, and a person who has a treaty should not be killed during the time of the treaty. Great Sahih. Chapter 22. A father should not be killed for his son. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah said, A father should not be killed for his son. Great Daif. It was narrated from Amr bin Shuaib, from his father, from his grandfather, that Umar bin Qatab said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, 
a father should not be killed for his son. Great Daif. Chapter 23 Can a free person be killed for a slave? It was narrated from Samura bin Jindab that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever kills his, whoever kills his slave, we will kill him, and whoever mutilates his slave, we will mutilate him. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Amr bin Shu'ayb from his father that his grandfather said, A man killed his slave deliberately and with malice a forefoot. So the Messenger of Allah gave him 100 lashes, banished him for one year, and cancelled his share from among the Muslims. Great Daif. Chapter 24 Retaliation upon the killer will be carried out in the same manner as he killed. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that a Jew crushed the head of a woman between two rocks and killed her, so the Messenger of Allah crushed his head between two rocks. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that a Jew killed a girl for her jewelry. He asked her as she was dying, Did so and so kill you? And she gestured with her head so to say no. Then he asked her again, and she gestured with her head to say no. He asked her a third time, and she gestured with her head to say yes. So the Messenger of Allah killed him by crushing his head between two rocks. Great Sahih. Chapter 25 there is no retaliation except with the sword. It was narrated from Numan bin Bashir that the Messenger of Allah said, There is no retaliation except with the sword. Great Daif. It was narrated from Abu Bakr that the Messenger of Allah said, There is no retaliation except with the sword. Great Daif. Chapter 26 no criminal can bring punishment upon anyone else for his crime. It was narrated from Sulaiman bin Ahmed bin Abbas that his father said, I heard the Messenger of Allah saying during the farewell pilgrimage, no criminal commits a crime but he brings the punishment for that upon himself. No father can bring punishment upon his son by his crime and no son can bring punishment upon his father. Great Hassan. It was narrated that Tariq al Munharibi said, I saw the Messenger of Allah raising his hands until I saw the whiteness of his armpits, saying, No child should be punished because of his mother's crime. No child should be punished because of his mother's crime. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Kash Kash Al-Ambari said I came to the Prophet and my son was with me. He said you will not be punished because of his crime and he will not be punished because of yours. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Usama bin Sharik that the Messenger of Allah said no person will be punished because of another's crime. Great Sahih. Chapter 27. Offenses for which there is no liability. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the mess that Allah's messenger. Uh, it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Allah's messenger said, "The injuries caused by the beast are without liability, and wells are with." and wells are without liability, and mines are without liability. Great Sahih. Kafir bin Abdullah bin Amr bin Av narrated that his grandfather said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, The injuries caused by the beast are without liability, and mines are without liability. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Ubala bin Samit said, 
the Messenger of Allah ruled that there is no liability for injuries caused by falling into a mines or a well, nor those caused by a beast. Great Sahih. It was narrated, it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, the injuries caused by a fire are without liability and by falling into a well. Great Sahih. Chapter 28 Oats It was narrated from Sal bin Abu Hatma from the elders of his people that Abdullah bin Sal and Muhayisa, Muhayisha set out for Kaibar because of some problem that had arisen. Someone came to Muhayisa, Muhayisha and he told him that Abdullah bin Sal had been killed and thrown into a pit or well in Kaibar. He came to the Jews and said, By Allah, you killed him. They said, By Allah, we did not kill him. Then he went back to his people and told them about that. Then he and his brother Huveisa, who was older than him, and Abdur Rahman bin Sal came to the Prophet. Muhayisa who was the one who had been at Kaibar, went and he began to speak. But the Messenger of Allah said, Let the elder speak first. So Huayisa spoke. Then Muhayisa spoke. The Messenger of Allah said, Either the Jews will pay the blood money for your companion, or war will be declared on them. The Messenger of Allah sent a letter to that effect to the Jews, and they wrote back saying, By Allah, we did not kill him. The Messenger of Allah said to Huayisa, Muhayisa, and Abdur Rahman, Will you swear an oath establishing your claim to the blood money of your companion? They said, No, he said, Should the Jews swear an oath for you? They said, They are not Muslims. So the Messenger of Allah paid the blood money himself and he sent 100 she camels to them and some of them entered the house and some of them entered the house Saul said a red she camels from among them kicked me great sahih it was narrated from Amr bin Shweib from his father from his grandfather that Huwaisa and Muhayisa the sons of Masud and Abdullah and Abdur Rahman, the sons of Saul, went out to search for food in Kaibar. Abdullah was attacked and killed, and mention of that was made to the Messenger of Allah. He said, Will you swear an oath and establish your right to blood money? They said, O Messenger of Allah, how can we swear an oath when we did not witness anything? He said, do you want the Jews to swear that they are innocent? They said, O Messenger of Allah, then they will kill us too. So the Messenger of Allah paid the blood money himself. Great Sahih. Chapter 29 Whoever mutilates his slave, then he, the slave, is free. <clears throat> it was narrated from Salama bin Rav bin Sinba that his grandfather came to the Prophet and he had castrated a slave of his. The Prophet manumitted his, the slave in compensation for having been mutilated. Great Sahih. Ahmed bin Shweib narrated from his father that his grandfather said, A man came to the Prophet screaming. The Messenger of Allah said to him, What is the matter with you? He said, My master saw me kissing a slave woman of his, so he cut off my penis. The Prophet said, Take me to the man. He was sought but could not be found. So the Messenger of Allah said, Go, f go, for you are free. He said, Who will protect me? O Messenger of Allah, what if my master enslaves me again? The Messenger, messenger of Allah said, Your protection will be incumbent upon every believer or Muslim. Great Hassan. Chapter 30. The most decent per the most decent people in killing are the people of fate. 
Abdullah said that the Messenger of Allah said, The most decent of the people in killing are the people of fate. Great Daif. It was narrated that Abdullah, that the Messenger of Allah said, The most decent people in killing are the people of fate. Great Daif. Chapter 31 The lives of all Muslims are equal in value. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet said, The blood of every Muslim is equal. They are one hand against others. The asylum offered by the lowest of them in status applies to them all, and the return is granted to the farthest of them. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Makil bin Yassar that the Messenger of Allah said, the Muslims are one hand against others, and their blood is equal. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Amr bin Shweib, from his father, from his grandfather, that the Messenger of Allah said, The hand of the Muslims is over others, and their blood and wealth is equal in value. The asylum granted by the lowest of them applies to the Muslims, and the Muslims return the spoils of war to the farthest of them, Great Hassan. Chapter 32 One who kills Mu'ahid It was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever kills a Mu'ahid will not smell the fragrance of paradise, even though its, its fragrance may be detected from a distance of 40 years, Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Whoever kills a Muahid who has the protection of Allah and the protection of his messenger will not smell the fragrance of paradise, even though its fragrance may be detected from a distance of 70 years. Great Sahih. Chapter 33 One who offers protection to a man then kills him. It was narrated that Rifa bin Shaddad al-Kitbani said, Were it not for a word that I heard from Amr bin Hamik Kusai, I would have separated the head of al muqtar from his body. I heard him saying, The Messenger of Allah said, If a man trusts, if a man trusts someone with his life, then he kills him. He will carry a banner of treachery on the day of resurrection. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Rifa said, I entered upon Muqtar in his palace and he said, Jibril has just left me. Nothing stopped me from striking his neck, yet killing him. But a hadith that I heard from Sulaiman bin Surad according to which the Prophet said, If a man trusts you with his life, then do not kill him. That is what stopped me. Great Daif. Chapter 34 Pardoning a Killer It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, A man killed another during the time of the Messenger of Allah and was referred to the Prophet he handed him over to the victim's next of kin. But the killer said, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah I did not mean to kill him. The Messenger of Allah said to the next of kin, If he is telling the truth and you kill him, you will go to hell. So he let him go. He had been tied with a rope and he went out dragging his rope. So he became known as Dan Nisa. The one with the rope, great Sahih. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, A man brought the killer of his relative to the Messenger of Allah, and the Messenger of Allah said, Pardon him, but they refused. He said, Take the blood money, but he refused. He said, Go and kill him, but then you will be like him. Someone caught up with him and reminded him that the Messenger of Allah had said, Go and kill him. 
but then you will be like him. So he let him go, he said, so he was seen dragging his strap going to his family. He said, it seemed that he had tied him up. It's narrated that Abdur Rahman bin Al Qasim said, then it is not permissible for anyone after the Prophet to say, go and kill him, but then you will be like him. Great Sahih. Chapter 35 Pardoning in cases of retaliation. It was narrated that Atta bin Abu Maimuna said, I only know it from Anas bin Malik who said, no case involving retaliation was referred to the Messenger of Allah, but he enjoined forgiveness. Great Sahih. Abu Darda said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, there is no man who suffers some injury on his body and forgives the perpetrator, but Allah SVT will raise him one degree in status thereby, or erase from him one sin. My own ears heard it and my heart memorized it. Great Daif. Chapter 36 a pregnant woman deserving retaliation. Mu'ad bin Jabal, Abu Ubaida bin Jadara, Ubada bin Samit, and Shadad bin Avs narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, <coughs> If a woman kills someone deliberately, she should not be killed until she delivers what is in her womb. If she is pregnant, and until the child's sponsorship is guaranteed. And if a woman commits illegal sex, she should not be stoned until she delivers what is in her womb and until her child's sponsorship is guaranteed. Great Daif. Chapter 37. 